Hi, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out Sailing by Rod Stewart. Now this is a great song for beginners, although it does use an F chord, so you want to be kind of confident with your F chord before embarking on this one. But it's a good one because it's a grower. There's lots of different approaches to it. You can keep the strumming real simple, or you can start adding in 16th note strumming, and or you can choose to use some finger style as well. So there's a quite a few different options that we're going to talk about uh, today. Uh, but starting off, we want to check out the chords, of course. So the intro is one bar of F, one bar of C, one bar of F, and then half a bar of C, half a bar of G. So if we're doing uh, four strums to the bar there, we'd be playing F, two, three, four, to C, two, three, four, then a bar of F again, two, three, four, then two strums on C, and two strums on G. Now, before we go any further, I just want to talk about, you know, your options there for some of these grips. If doing a big bar chord F is a bit too difficult for you, definitely doing little little bar chord. And I think, well, it's not even a bar chord, really, if you play it this way. You're just doing a little bar with your first finger on the thinnest two strings. So you only want to play the thinnest four strings for that. And I think that's actually a pretty good option for this song because it doesn't want to be too heavy there with the bass. Um, real clever guys might want to try and get the thumb around to play the bass note of the F chord as well. Okay, that can be kind of nice. Uh, again, it's just an option of kind of where you're at and what sound you want. If you're capable of doing all of them, you can choose. Otherwise, you do the one that you can kind of play and get a good sound on. Or use this song as one of those kind of ones that you practice working on your chord for. It's also a good option there. Um, the other thing to think about here is the G chord. You can use fingers one, two, and three, but because we're going from a C chord, it's often easier to use fingers two, three, and four, which, again, it's a little bit tricky for a, you know, a real beginner, but, you know, progressing beginners might want to check that out because it does make the change from the C chord to the G chord a lot easier and definitely something that you should be uh, exploring on as part of your journey. Um, now into the verse chords, it's the same chord sequence for all the verses, right? So it's a really nice one. It's one bar of C, then to an A minor, then to an F chord, then back to C. Then it's D major, then to A minor, then to D minor, then to C, to G. And again, it's C chord, then it's A minor, then to F chord, then to C. Then to D major, and then A minor, then D minor, then it's C for a half a bar, then to G for half a bar. Da, da, da. Now I should point out as well, we're in a completely different key to the original recording, so trying to play along with the, the original Rod Stewart version with these chords is going to sound real weird. Um, and we've also simplified some of the chords for beginners because the original version's in B, which is you, you pretty much have to use bar chords all of the way through. So it's a, a very different uh, kind of thing if you're going to try and play along with that. Um, you definitely might want to check out my beginner song chord app uh, for iOS and for uh, Android because uh, then you can play along with this and you get the drums and the bass kind of backing and the melody played along with the organ as well, which is kind of a nice thing for beginners to kind of... It helps you, particularly songs with F chord, where a lot of people might pause before it. So they do the C chord. Now I am sailing. It's all going really well. And then they go, oh, it's F chord. And then they continue. So having a backing track kind of forces you to just jump to that F chord real super quick because you're much better off keeping the rhythm solid and having the chord a little bit ropey than the other way around. Okay, if the, one of the notes in the F chord doesn't come out, you know, no one's going to get hurt. And you can keep the song going. It'll feel a lot more musical if you can keep the rhythm going. Okay, so it's a kind of an important thing. So first step I would recommend is trying to play just four down strums to the bar. Okay, if you're playing along with my song chord app, the chord is flashing on beats one and three. Uh, which is an even simpler version. If you wanted to, you could just play like, I am sailing, I am sailing, which is one, two, three, four, two, one, two, 
Three. That's okay to do that, you know. You, if you, particularly if you're finding the strumming and getting the chord changes together, you know, to do them fast enough, that could be a nice way around. But I think a really a more solid idea is to try and practice the four down strums to the bar. Okay, that's a really good way of keeping yourself in time. You should be doing your down strums with your foot tap as well, so helping you kind of develop your own timekeeping as you as you go as a beginner. That's really important. Um, once you've got that, another nice thing to do, because it's quite slow this tune, is you can do double downs, okay? So you're playing down strums on the beat, like one, two, three, and four, and the and. So if you're doing that, just, I'll just do it on the C chord. So the original will be one, two, three, four. If you're going to add downs in between, one, and two, and three, and four, and one. just kind of moves it along a little bit more than it because if you're just doing all down strums it tends to sound a little bit kind of flat so doing the double downs approach so the 16th note strumming really is what you're doing there because you're doing 16 arm movements in the bar eight downs and eight ups okay but we're just focusing at that point on just the downs uh, the thing that you want to remember is that the ones on the ands will be a little bit softer so it's kind of like loud soft loud soft loud soft loud soft and on the soft ones i'm just playing the kind of the bass notes of the chords and on the on the beats i'm strumming right through so big strum little strum big strum little strum one and two and three and four just keeps the movement nicer on a real slow song if you're not strumming much it tends to sound just a little bit weird and it's hard to keep time as well when it's really slow and you're doing hardly any strums so um, that's worth uh, bearing in mind um, when the, the kind of the next step along is to add in an upstroke and, and a nice strumming pattern that you might want to try here will be this down down up down 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 up down 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 up down 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 up down 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 one and a two and three e and four and one and a two and three e and four and okay it's a really really nice 16th note strumming pattern again i'll say it real slow one and a two and three e and four and one and a two and three e and four and now the motions are exactly the same as if you're doing all downs so okay so if you're doing eight down strums to the bar one and two and three and four and hand movement is exactly the same one and a two and three and four or one and two and three and four and okay so that's really the key thing there is keeping that hand moving consistently all of the time okay and and that's a real nice pattern that's the one that we've got uh, in the app to for you to play along with as well so if you turn the strumming on you'll hear that strumming pattern being played it fits really nicely for this song however you don't you shouldn't feel restricted to that you can really experiment with these things especially once you've got a backing track on it's really nice to experiment with what rhythm you might like to use and what feels nice with the song okay so it's very don't ever feel restricted by strumming patterns try and find the ones that feel nice for you for that particular song um, and the other option i just wanted to mention to you is that the original one is finger style beautiful finger style playing on on the original one uh way beyond big beginner level to do the kind of patterns that are involved on that. Um, but what you probably want to think about if you're doing any finger style, a nice little kind of starter, well it's not really a starter finger style, you want to have done at least the finger style uh, in my beginners, as part of my beginners course first, because uh, this is 16th note uh, beginner course, so uh, uh, 16th note finger style. Um, <laughs> would be a nice pattern. So thumb will always be playing the bass note of the chord, whatever that will be. For a C chord, it would be the fifth string. For the F chord, it would be the fourth string or the thickest string if you want. If you're playing big F, the G chord, the bass note will be on the thickest string. And on the D chord, it'll definitely be any D or D minor, the, the thumb will be playing the fourth string. Uh, fingers one, two, three go on the thinnest three strings. Okay, so they'll always be on the thinnest string. First finger will always play the third string. Second finger will always play the second string. Third finger will always play the thinnest string. And a nice pattern just to get going will be thumb one, two, one, thumb one, two, three, two, one, thumb one. Okay, thumb one, two, three, two, one, thumb one. Okay, thumb one, two, three, two, one, thumb one. Okay, thumb one, two, three, two, one, thumb one. Okay, thumb one, two, three, two, one
thumb one two three two one thumb one. So you want to practice those sort of things just real slow. Make sure that you're getting a nice sound. And make sure that you can do it consistently while you're thinking about other stuff. Okay? Now this is one of the big secrets if you're going to get into fingerstyle guitar. Is to be able to automate a fingerstyle pattern so you can think about other stuff. Okay, so now I'm thinking about teaching you and I'm still able to maintain that finger picking pattern, I hope. <laughs> um, because if you're going to play a tune and you're thinking about playing the different chords or you're thinking about the lyrics, while well, you're going to keep that pattern going. You know, the pat if you're not real confident with the pattern, it ain't going to work, okay? The pattern's going to start falling apart. So you want to practice it. First of all, make sure you've got a nice sound, make sure you're getting the pattern right. And then see if you can start playing it and distracting yourself. So just on a C chord, so thumb's going to be playing the fifth string. Thumb, one, two, three, two, one, thumb, one. Do it twice in a bar. So at the beginning you'd have F to C. F to C to G. We are C chord. We are A minor. fluffy moment there where the pattern didn't quite go the same because I was thinking about singing the chords and then I was thinking oh am I going to be able to sing the chords while I get the thing and and of course when I had too many thoughts go at the same time the pattern went a little bit wonky okay it's kind of normal and not, nothing to be stressed about but what's important is that you keep going okay hopefully a lot of you probably didn't even notice that I did the finger picking pattern ever so slightly wrong it doesn't matter whereas if I'd stopped if I'd gone oh and made a mistake you all would have known okay so trying to play through that keeping the rhythm going is much more important than if you accidentally pick one of the wrong strings one time okay it's not, really not a big deal um, a finger picking pattern of course is a little bit trickier and it, it, it's quite fast as well if you're new to finger picking that's going to be a pretty difficult one you could definitely simplify it and just go so half the speed instead of in one bar you could obviously very significantly easier to do it at that speed okay but there's lots of other patterns as well you can really finger style is an interesting little realm to explore because you can make up your own finger patterns usually you want to have the the thumb playing the bass note of the chord on beat one that's the only real rule that you you want to stick to if you start messing with that it can make things pretty complicated so i wouldn't recommend going there but uh, otherwise it's, it's pretty free to explore and this is such a lovely song for that so you can see hopefully you can go from like real simple just doing the four down strums then doing double down so playing eight down strums to the bar then you can introduce a couple of excuse me up strums and if you're feeling really adventurous you can start applying some finger stars so really really great song for developing a whole range of skills not just keeping it as a, a, a very easy beginner kind of a tune it's really kind of progressing beginner and then pushing you almost into kind of intermediate level because sixteenth note strumming is something I put into the intermediate level generally speaking so um, it's a nice grower 
hopefully you enjoy it. So if you're enjoying this, do please go and check out my app. There'll be links in the description below. And remember over on the website, more than a thousand free lessons, all nicely laid out for you, all graded with nice progress. So you can see what practice routines you should be doing, all that sort of stuff and hints and tips all along the way. Nice songs all graded for you from real easy to getting harder. So hopefully you'll uh, go and visit the site, see what that's all about. There's a lot more there than you'll find just on my YouTube channels, if that's where you're watching this. Uh, so, but please subscribe to my channel if you dig what I do. I really appreciate your support. I'll see you for plenty more songs and lessons very soon. You take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.